Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And now, Superman. As our story opens today, Clark Kent sits at his desk in the city room of his newspaper, putting the finishing touches on a follow-up story about the bursting of the great dam at Dyerville, a strange adventure in which Superman played a thrilling part. But already an even stranger adventure is at hand. Above the clatter of typewriters and news tickers, Kent hears the door of a private office open behind him. He half turns in his chair, just as Jay Hamlin, assistant to Editor White, calls him by name. Hey there, Clark Kent. Right here. Come in here a minute. Close the door. This is something very special, Kent. And if Mr. White were here, I know that he'd want you to take it on. Oh, I don't think you know Miss Beecham, do you? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. Elsie, this is Clark Kent. How do you do, Mr. Kent? I'm delighted to know you, Miss Beecham. Sit down, Kent. Pay close attention. You've heard of Dr. George Haven Beecham, haven't you? Explorer, scientist, archaeologist. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, Elsie's his daughter. Oh. Yes, I've known her since she was an infant. And her father is one of my closest friends. Now, here's the situation. Something mysterious and unusual has happened to Dr. Beecham. But, uh, suppose you tell the story, Elsie, huh? Hmm? It... It may sound a little silly to Mr. Kent. Oh, I'm sure it won't. Go right ahead, Miss Beecham. From the beginning, Elsie. Well, it, it's this way. Nine months ago, my father went into the jungles of South America to supervise the excavation of some ancient tombs. He wrote to me regularly, and, and everything seemed to be quite all right. How often did you hear from him, Elsie? Oh, about once a week. The last letter came two days before he sailed for home. In it, he, he told me not to meet him at the boat. Oh, that's strange. Did he give any reason? Well, none at all. He said he'd phone me. And did he? Yes, he did. Two hours after the boat docked. Well, what did he say, Miss Beecham? Practically nothing. He sounded almost ghostly. Like a man afraid of his life. Oh, now, you're just imagining things, Elsie. If I know your father, and I do, he's never been afraid of anything. And that's just what's had me worried. That and, and the instructions he gave me. What were the instructions, Miss Beecham? Well, first he told me he couldn't see me for quite some time. That in itself is natural, Kent. Elsie and her father have always been devoted to one another. I see. Uh, go on, Miss Beecham. He said he was going out to Brentwood for a while, that he had to be alone. Uh, did he say where in Brentwood, Miss Beecham? The Stone House. But he warned me not to try to communicate with him. He said he was quite well and that he'd brought back a native servant to look after him, a half-breed named Zingre. You did try to call him, though, didn't you? I I waited until yesterday. Then I, then I couldn't stand it any longer. You phoned? Yes. There was no answer. Oh. Huh. Well, that's queer. If your father was using the stone house in Brentwood as a hideaway, it, well, it seems to me he'd be there. That's just how I felt, Mr. Kemp. Now, now you know why I'm so worried. Uh, have you thought of notifying the Brentwood police? Oh, no, I didn't dare. Father despises publicity. He'd be furious with me. Oh. There's only one thing to do, Kent. You take Elsie to Brentwood and find out what's what. Why, well, I'd be glad to. Now, let's see, it's, uh, it's six now. Well, suppose we have dinner, Miss Beecham, and then drive out. Right. I'd love to, Mr. Kent. Well, shall we leave now? We don't want to get out there too late. Oh, I'm ready, if you are. Let me know the moment you find out anything. Sure thing, Mr. Hamlin. Goodbye, Uncle Jay, and, and thanks a million. Forget it, and stop worrying. Oh, goodness. What a dreary-looking place. Is this Brentwood, Mr. Kent? This is Brentwood, all right, Miss Beecham. Uh, and I think that's Stonehouse, back of those trees and behind that iron fence. Well, if Dad's there, he, he simply doesn't want callers. Why, it looks completely closed up. Yes, not a light anywhere. Oh, say, I guess we passed the gate. The gate? You know, leading into the grounds. Oh. Well, what are you getting out for? Where are you going, Mr. Kent? Well, I, I just thought I'd run back and see if the gates are open. Uh, wait here a minute, will you? Well, don't leave me alone here too long, Mr. Kent. Don't worry, Miss Beecham. I'll be right back. I hope she doesn't try to follow me. Something about the look of this fence and gate I don't quite like. It's too carefully hidden away back at the shrubbery. Purposely hidden. I wonder why. Ah, here we are. Now, I wonder if I can get through the fence or over it or... Oh! oh. Electrified, eh? <laughs> quite a jolt, too. Ah, this looks like a job for Superman. Pretty smart, shooting high-powered voltage through an iron fence, but not smart enough. Uh, get back out of the shrubbery and look around. 
Ah, here's the gate. That's probably electrified, too. Well, I'll just kick it in and drive the car right through. Nothing like arriving in style. Here goes. Hey, whoever built this gate certainly did want privacy. Well, he won't have it long. There, that does it. Now, back to Miss Beecham as Clark Kent. Oh, oh, here you are. Is everything all right? I can't say just yet, but things are certainly opening up. Let's turn the car around and see what's going on at that house, eh? Well, what are we going to do? Drive right in? Sure, why not? Well, it doesn't seem exactly as though we're wanted, Mr. Kent. Ah, we'll find out soon enough. Ah, here's the entrance. Why, those gates... Did you say you just opened them? More or less. Why? They look like they were blown in in a hurricane. Well, they were old and rusty, Miss Beecham. They they just fell apart. Well, well, what are you stopping here on the driveway for? And why are you switching off the lights? Now, look here, Miss Beecham. I'm going to tell you quite frankly that I'm into trouble. Oh, Mr. Kent, what do you mean? Now, now, please, don't get hysterical. I, I won't, but... but... Miss Beecham, I want to go up to that house and have a look around before... Well, before they know we're here. Mr. Kent, do you think... Do you think anything's happened to my father? Now, Miss Beecham, honestly, I, I don't think anything. Not yet. Then why why all the secrecy? Why are you leaving me here and, and going to the house yourself? Oh, you must know more than you're telling me. Oh, believe me, I don't. It's just that your father and whoever else is with him in the house seem to want privacy. And they've tried to make sure of it. For some unknown reason, that privacy is vitally important to them. Oh, let me come with you. No, now, please. You just stay here and watch the car. And if you see anything, or want me for anything... Blow the horn. Oh, Mr. Kent, I'm afraid. I don't like it here. The awful silence. The darkness. No, no, there's nothing to be afraid of. You just sit tight while I investigate. But where will you be? Not too far away. Remember now, if anything happens, just blow that horn and keep blowing. All right, Mr. Kent. But please hurry. Please hurry. <laughs> Poor kid. She's frightened stiff. Little wonder. I don't like to leave her alone, but she can't be around when Superman's doing his stuff. And it looks like he has to. Well, I'll just climb up the side of Stone House a little way and see what's doing. Clinging to the second story window of Stone House, Superman peers into the dark interior, listens intently. A door slams, and suddenly the night is stabbed by the wild blowing of the auto horn and the weird baying of hounds. What's that? Somebody's blowing a horn. Elsie must be in trouble. All right, Miss Beecham. I'm coming. Help! Help me, Mr. Oh, Kent. She's being attacked by huge masters. Get down. Get down, you people. Help! Miss Beecham. Help! I'm coming. Help! Get me out. The dogs. They're climbing through the window. Help, Mr. Kent. Stay in the car, Miss Beecham. Don't get out. I'll take care of them. They're coming in, Mr. Kent. Save them. Help! Down. 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 Down, you. Down, you. Look out. Down. Down. Me. Roll those windows. There. I've got the black one. Look out for the blue one. He's leaving at you. Mr. Kent. Oh, you don't. Feel like a fight, eh? All right, so do I. How about this? And this. Oh, Mr. Kent. Where are you, Mr. Kent? I'm all right, Miss Beecham. Now then, you hounds, home before I tear you to pieces. Go on, get away. And don't come back. Go on. Oh, Mr. Kent. Have they gone? Mr. Kent. Coming right back, Miss Beecham. And they've gone, Miss Beecham. You can come out of the car if you like. Oh, they frightened me so, Mr. Kent. Came out of nowhere, out of the darkness like wolves. Yes, they, they did look pretty dangerous. The black one particularly. I was sitting in the car waiting for you when I heard them barking. Suddenly they were up on the running board. Oh, Mr. Kent, it was ghastly. Well, it's, it's all over now. I think I'll take you along with me just in case the dogs decide to return. I've discovered there's someone in the house. Maybe your father or... Admi- Mr. Kent, what's that? Well, I... I don't know. Sounds like a drum. Drum? Mr. Kent, it's a tom-tom. Someone's beating a tom-tom. But why? Listen, it's coming nearer all the time. Look, Mr. Kent. What? They are through the trees. What? What? A man, a giant. He's coming this way. Look. <laughs> what is it that Elsie Beecham has seen bearing down on them? Man or monster? Does the weird beat of the jungle tom-tom herald its approach? And what about Dr. Beecham? Is he or is he not safe behind the gray walls of Stone House? Tune in next time and follow the exciting story of Superman.
Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted.